Facebook stock, FB stock, it is a company. It's a story that's been quite compelling recently. You look at the uptick. The massive, massive uptick post earnings, a jump of about 17% in value all the way up to a 23.11% return in the space of just two days. We were euphoric. We were excited. Facebook shareholders were over the moon. And yet, post that, the market has continued to punish the company, continuing to decline on the day, down about 2.56%. So, yes, we had our uptick. Yes, we had our massive euphoric jump. A lot of us were very, very excited. I know many of you own stakes in Facebook, and naturally, massive uptick, very satisfying. But what's going to happen next? We know there's a lot of still undervaluation in the company, but how long is that going to take to get realized? How long is it going to take to get that true value extracted by the company? Well, I think when you look at the fundamentals, you look at the fundamentals post-earnings, you get a very interesting story. Let me show you. If we come down to the fundamentals, and yes, we've had declines on the day around 2.56%, but if we look at the fundamentals, things have shifted a little inside Facebook despite that massive uptick. With such a massive uptick in the day, some new investors, some less experienced investors, may naturally conclude that the underlying business of Facebook has had massive improvement, that it's jumped up in value by 20%, and naturally, it must be more profitable. It must be more financially strong. That's just not the case. Because when you actually analyze the fundamentals of Facebook, you'll see there hasn't been a massive uptick. There's actually been a slight decline, a slight degradation of the quality associated not only with their financial strength, but also their profitability. If we come down here, we have a look. That cash to debt ratio, the, the measure of how much cash they have on hand relative to their debt, is actually declined. A cash to debt ratio formally of around 3.56, now only 3.12. So less cash on hand relative to their debt. In fact, that Altman score is slightly lower, I believe, too. An Altman score of only 10.45 relative to what it would have been prior. So less financial stability for the company on a cash to debt basis. They're burning through more capital, a large portion of which was used on their VR division. Reinvesting, they're trying to build out the metaverse, building out the technologies associated with making that metaverse dream come to reality. So, yes, financial stability has degraded slightly less cash on hand, an Altman score with potentially a degree of variability. I'm going to have to go back and double check that, compare the Altman scores over time, but I believe that naturally with less cash on hand, there's less financial stability with the company. Well, some people may say, less cash on hand, less stability, does that mean we should stay away? Absolutely not. In a, a business that's in a cycle such as Facebook, a business that finds itself in what is likely a difficult period going forward over the next two, three years, as they continually try to reinvest, as they continue to try to build out not only the metaverse, but also make transitions within their underlying business model, of course, there's going to be struggles. Of course, there's going to be degradation of their underlying financial strength over time. Of course, that's going to happen. We've seen it with business in the past. We will see it again. This is not indicative of a degradation of underlying quality, but instead, rather following a pathway to further growth going forward. Less cash on hand because they are reinvesting. Less cash on hand because they're making strides toward long-term capital allocation. As you as a shareholder, us as investors in this company, that only stands to benefit us. So in relation to the cash on hand, not too concerned at all. Absolutely fine. What I am somewhat concerned about is the net margins, the underlying profitability of this company, because that has continued to see declines. Net margins at present of 31.2%. You recall that only last quarter, net margins stood at around 33%. The quarter before that, 36%. So we're seeing margins decline by around 20, 26% quarter over quarter. Not too favorable, but also indicative of the situation in which the company finds itself naturally. As Apple's privacy changes come into effect, as the advertising is not as effective for Facebook, naturally, net margins decline. Now you may say, well, net margins have declined quarter over quarter. Does this mean we should stay away from the business? Look at the net margins. Present net margins of 31.2%. Historically, yes, they are somewhat lower than what the company has historically achieved. Historically, the height of their margins was around 39%. But these margins are really that bad? Are net margins of 31.2% really that bad? Let's put this into perspective. Net margins of 31.2%, they are higher than Google. 
They are higher than Apple. They are well beyond what Amazon's producing. They are still at the very upper tier, not only in relation to FANG stocks, but in relation to businesses more broadly. Net margins of 31.2% still means that for every dollar of revenue that comes into their business, they retain about 31% of that as pure profit. Still, an immense degree of profitability. Still, a very attractive business on a profitability basis. So, yes, we have seen declines in terms of cash on hand. Yes, we have seen declines in terms of net margins. But do we really not expect this? I thought this would happen. I thought we'd see slight declines in terms of the underlying quality of the business naturally as these headwinds continue to prevail. But even despite that, despite these slight declines in underlying business quality, despite the lower returns on equity, despite the cash to debt ratio getting lower over time, what about the valuation? Yes, we may be seeing slight declines in the underlying quality of the business, but we know that they beat earnings expectations. They beat earnings expectations on the earnings call. So how does that affect the valuation at present? Let me show you. Current PE ratio still sits around 15.16 forward PE of 13.55, which is fairly appealing. You can see there's more of a differential between the current PE and the forward PE, indicating that investors, the market more broadly, have become a bit more optimistic about the growth that can perpetuate for this company going forward. So, let's see how much growth has been taking place. We know that growth has been slowing down, but we also know that they beat expectations in the last call. So how does that affect the growth rates of the company? How does it affect the underlying valuation? Well, if we come down here, we can still see over the past decade, growth for Facebook has been absolutely exceptional. A 68.5% growth rate over the past 10 years. A five-year growth rate still of 27.8%. And yes, yes, the one-year growth rate is lower, but still a fairly admirable growth rate at 13.1%. Of course, taking into account those Apple privacy changes. 13.1%, yes, fairly low. Think about last quarter, it was sitting around 36.1%. So that is a significant decline. But was it really unexpected? Management provided guidance in the prior earnings call of around 3 to 11%. So 13% growth at present, not too bad. Revenue growth is still sitting around 29.9%. Operating growth of 17.7%, EBITDA 17.3%, and free cash flow. Free cash flow is still killing it. A highly free cash flow creative business model with a growth rate of 68.9%. So, yes, the growth rates have declined on a earnings per share basis. Yes, these growth rates, operating income, EBITDA, they have slowed down somewhat. But how does that affect the valuation? If we still price in conservative growth on Facebook, are we still getting a fair price for our money? Well, let me show you. Even if we price in just a 6% growth rate going forward, just 6%, Going forward over the next decade, 6% growth rate going forward over the next decade, we still get a fair price for Facebook. A fair value of $200.11 relative to the current trading price of $200.47. So, if we price in even the most conservative of growth assumptions, we still get a fair price for this business. We still have a fairly advantageous buying opportunity, a chance to buy a wonderful company trading at a fair price price. And if that isn't value investing, if that's not long-term centric investing, then I don't know what is. If we up those growth rates a little, if we increase growth going forward, let's have a look. Let's think about how much growth can perpetuate for this company if things actually come to fruition. If the metaverse, if meta succeeds in building out the metaverse, playing a major role in that metaversal economy, in addition to improving their underlying business, adapting to the changes made by Apple in terms of privacy, what if that all happens? Well, if that all comes to fruition, I don't think something like a 15% growth rate would be completely unreasonable. I think, in fact, that if the metaverse comes to fruition, 15% would be fairly conservative. So if we price that in, 15% growth rate going forward over the next decade, look at that price target. A price target of $371.31. I had a lot of investors. A lot of people coming to me, a lot of people commenting down below and also sending me direct messages saying, listen, I think post earnings, Facebook's valuation isn't going to be as appealing. I think they're going to miss earnings. It's not going to be as good. Were those people right? Not at all. They bet earnings. Increased over time. Bet expectations. And now this company still poses a fairly advantageous buying opportunity. Yes, 
there has been a big uptick in value. We're no longer paying the $180, $170 we could have been paying a few days ago. But even at this $200 price, even with this higher price point, this is still a company yielding massive upside potential. Up that to a 17% growth rate and well, you are more than doubling your money. With a 17% growth rate going for the next decade, more than double your capital. That is the type of opportunity that's present. That is what I've been saying about Facebook for months on end. Yes, there is degrading quality in the underlying business. We're naturally going to see that in the short term. We'll likely continue to see net margin declines. I can imagine net margins falling all the way down to around 27, 29%. I can see that happening. I can even see cash on hand being burnt up a bit more as they invest more aggressively in the metaverse. But this does not concern me at all. They still have massive amounts of cash on hand. They still have an immensely high degree of profitability relative not only to competitors, but relative to businesses more broadly. Facebook is still an advantageous buyer. Facebook is still a high quality, firmly entrenched business. For me, even at this higher price, still absolutely a buy. Of course, Conduct your own research first, look into the business yourself before you make any decisions. But if you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something more about Facebook as a company, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below, we'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you, I'll see you in the next one.